Most people that grow on Instagram, it is not luck. Without doing those things, it never, ever works well. Probably the reels don't work. No, you didn't work. In some cases, you're probably off, you know, better off starting a new account. In this video, we are going to teach you how to go viral on Instagram. Hello, welcome. We're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter. We're to help you, we are here to help you with your online fitness business in any way we can. And today we're going to talk about the time that Mike went viral. Uh, no. They gave me a cream. Viral. And of course, antibiotics. It was fine. Instagram virality is what we're talking about. Okay. I think that's probably the best for this this YouTube channel. That's it. Still on ads then, can't we? It's not going to be 18 plus. Uh, we didn't put any ads on our videos. Don't bother. The, no. the, the two cents isn't worth it. Yeah. Um, from that point of view. Keep but anyway, it. we're going to talk about how to go viral on Instagram. Um, and of course- Add it on, if anything. Huh? Add it on, Add if, it anything. on if anything. And of course, the irony of this, of course, is that me and Mike have both neither been viral on Instagram. That doesn't mean that we can't teach you how to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you might be sat here going, but well, you're getting 200 views on a video. How can you teach because you're not sharing it. So yeah. go share it with people, all right? Yeah, there you go. Out. That's the CTA so that we gold. need. Share it, like it, put it on your stories, well, tag us in it. So this is the problem, though. This is the problem, though, right? It. Is that if you're an online coach watching this, you're not going to share it because then everyone else is going to get hold of the secrets the that secrets. you know. So it is. that's why they're not sharing it. I know, uh, I know what you're I doing. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. I know you're not sharing it because of that. It's like, well, why would you want other people to know about it? You know, but it would help us, so... Uh, yeah, so yeah, we haven't gone uh, viral um, on Instagram anyway. On Instagram, um, and shock horror, that's okay. It's not affected our business one iota. Um, so this video is a little bit clickbait with the how to go viral stuff. Um, oh, don't tell them that now because I'm not going to stay and watch it now. Uh, I mean, but we are going to teach you how to grow on Instagram. So yep. you know, um, there is importance in terms of getting more followers at times um, if the criteria uh, is is met, and we're going to teach you about that criteria. So mm. um, stay tuned. Um, but yeah, so I guess let's first start before we say how to do it. In what positions do you think that somebody would need to be in before they go through like a growth phase on, on Instagram? So one of the things that you need to ensure when it comes to a growth phase on Instagram is that you have your niche absolutely nailed. You need to know exactly who you're speaking to. It needs to be very clear and obvious. You need to be able to connect with that audience properly. So you need to make sure that your account is somewhat engaged before you try and then you know, reach loads of those people. And I'd like to say that you probably get in regular inquiries and regular people reaching out to your CTAs around coaching, around a lead magnet, all that sort of stuff. And then you also need to have a lead magnet that's very niche specific set up to drive people to an email list away from Instagram because there's no point in going viral unless you've got an email list to send people to so that you can actually... I scrape their emails, which is probably sounds a bit stupid, but it's essentially trying to get them away from social media so that you almost own the email address, the email list, because if Instagram was to die tomorrow, you'd then have an asset that you could then use to restart another account or restart a different social media network, whatever it might be. That's why we talk about it all the time and it's why all the other mentors are absolutely stupid for not suggesting you build an email list, but they don't know how, so that's fine. Um, with that. So they're the things that you'd probably want to have in place on Instagram. And I'd also say be in a position where you feel comfortable creating content as well. Like I don't think anyone's going to grow on Instagram posting, you know, shitty Canva templates and, and, and you know, not knowing how to write a decent caption and, and to create video content and feel comfortable editing it, I would say probably. It's from a skill set point of view. Yeah, I would say um, things to be aware of. If you've got three, four, five, six thousand followers northwards and you've got 10 clients the issue isn't you need more followers the issue is is you need to learn how to monetize your your audience how to build connections um how to build engagement with your current audience so you actually probably shouldn't be looking at growth and if you do only have you know 10 12 clients out of five thousand people i believe that there's deeper issues at, at, at play it could be the way that you grew your audience it could be that you got asked to do paid shout outs it could be that you did the the whole go follow the cold dms it could be it could be those things, which is a different matter entirely. And in some cases, you're probably off. You know, better off starting a new account to some degree. Don't take me on my word at that because I'm. You know, it's not specific advice to yourself. But that I have seen as as a bit of an issue when you've got five six thousand followers and you get in a hundred story views, and then you've done all the things to try to get the story views up and try to make engagement. And it's still not happening. It could be that you've you've, you've done something along the way to, to pull in the wrong followers so that's 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 a caveat if you do have say under a, a thousand followers something like that um it, it's worthwhile going through a growth phase again the the aim is not to go viral because it's the same tactics 
to grow as it is to go viral, right? It's still the same thing. To pull in new followers, it, it, it's going to be a similar type thing that you need to do. But Dan's absolutely right. I would say that you, you need to have everything set up on that page so that when eyes are coming onto that page, there's actually something of relevance on there. It's no good making a viral style video to pull in eyes. And, and actually, you don't look like a coach. <coughs> you don't look like a coach. You don't deliver any results. You don't have something free to give them. Mm. You don't have an email list. You, it doesn't look like the, there's any clear niche there and you're just pulling any sets of eyes in. That is a recipe for disaster. Um, so you need to make sure that that is in place. Now, that all sounds boring. That's boring, that's boring Dan and Mike. Don't want to do that. I want to do the, the thing that gets loads of eyes on my page. Honestly, we've seen people get loads of eyes on their page without doing those things. It never, ever works well. And it works even less well over the long term. They might get an initial spike of applications because it's fresh and it's exciting and there's loads of new eyes. But once those people get bored of the same style content in six, 12 months, mm -hmm. the engagement drops. So just be aware of that. So going into a, a, growth, a growth phase, you are going to have to almost periodize the way that you do this because... I would go with growth phases and then connection phases. If you're looking at growth, if you've got five or 6,000 people that are already engaged, keep learning how to monetize that. Mm -hmm. Develop another product, a group coaching, develop more lead magnets, build your email list, still do that. But if you have determined that you need more growth, so you've got under 1,000 followers or... Um, you have monetized your audience. So like a Jeff Foden or a Ryan Stewart or a Will and Sam from Trident. Um, Jeff Foden's uh, got 2,500 followers, something like that. And he, I think he's got 80 clients, just like 16 grand a month. He knows how to monetize his audience, right? 2,000 followers. Ryan Stewart, 2,200 followers, sold 115 on a group coaching, um, 50, 60 clients, something like that. Um, Will and Sam, 3,000 each um, followers, um, 80 clients for Sam, 100 for Will, 86 on a group coaching and another coaching board. They know how to monetize their audience. So if that audience now isn't growing, it could be worthwhile just even getting another 1,000 following. Not 100,000, but just another 1,000 because think, then we know we can monetize that 1,000. I think that's the trick as well is like when we talk about going viral is like literally if you could double the amount of followers you've got, that's what we're looking for here. We're not looking for hundreds of thousands and millions. Like again, I think people always assume that if they get a video that has 16 million views, they're going to automatically have a business change of a night. Well, you're not. What we're talking about is if you can quadruple your views on your reels over an extended period of time and you can get double the amount of followers, you go from 1,000 to 2,000. Believe me, if that is niche specific and it's set up in the right way, with a good email list that is more than enough to to then start to monetize and, and connect with people i think people are too quick to think oh i've got to get to half a million i've got to get all these crazy numbers and that can happen it does happen some of my clients has happened too um but it's not without its issues it's not without its problems whereby almost there's an expectation then i think from some of the clients that i've had where they've gone from say 2,000 followers to say 16 to 20 they actually are doing it the right way and doing it a better way because they're able to connect with their audience still. They're able to DM people. They're able to kind of create that connection on the back end of that growth phase versus what some people do is they see the growth and they see an initial video go up and spike and they go, oh, I'm just going to make the same video over and over again then because it, there's the dopamine hit of just more followers. But we have seen it with people where their followers go up so much that when they then run out of content ideas, the engagement drops so much that they can't re-engage an audience. Like I know people with 150,000 followers, they can't get 4,000 views on a reel. And it's like, well, that's because your engagement's dropped so low, it's just not going to show it to as many people. So there is like, I don't want to say like a a dark side to it, but there's a side to it that people don't talk about and they won't tell you this because they're going to, you know, it's in their interest to, to say to you like, grow more, grow more because it makes them look better. But underneath the surface, there isn't many of those people that are running really successful businesses. They're just addicted to growing more followers. And there's an assumption that you grow more followers, you get more money. And that's not the case. You have to go through these phases of growth and connection. And as hard as it is sometimes, is that I think that once you've had a good period of growth, you need to stop and then go for a period of connection. Mm -hmm. But it's very difficult to give up that dopamine hit of those views and those followers because you see them drop and you go and you panic. And you think, oh my God, what if, what if, what if? We've seen it. I've had it with clients. I know Mike's had it with clients before. But we're doing it because it's the best thing for your business long term, not doing it just to kind of like be a killjoy and be like, oh, stop growing now. Mm. It's done for a reason in that you need to then connect with those people once they're in and show them the other sides to you versus just a clown on Instagram, potentially, if that's the, the way it's gone. Yeah. Um, so I've just been away for a week, week and a half, and I've had three of my clients go viral. Um, whilst I've been away, um, 
doing a few of the same things. Um, all of them have got things set up in place um, to help monetize it. Um, one of them, I just looked there, Tia, she's had now up to 17.5 million views on one of her videos, on that video. It's still going. Um, it hasn't dramatically changed the business. I think she had like four inquiries last week, something like that, which is not a lot. To be fair, she didn't CTA in the video or anything like that. She's not got tons of followers. She's only got 4,000. Um, and the, 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 the four applications, to be fair, um, we'll take them. Um, it, it's quite nice. But we know that if it does start to grow, we, we already have uh, an email list in place. She's very, very niche specific in terms of who she works with. Um, it's quite clear who her audience is. Um, and we've got all of the things in place. So the things that I'm asking people to do are have a look at your accounts reached and your accounts engaged. Work it out what that works out to be on a day to day level. I'm when I'm checking with some of my clients, they're getting a hundred counts engaged for the week, and you kind of go, "All right, that's what fifteen people, thirteen, fourteen people a day, or whatever it works out to be," um, which is not a lot. So, if you're going through a growth phase to try to drive more reach, which in turn should drive more engagement, if the content is opinionated or has a CTA in it that tells them to do something, which will drive engagement. You should start to bias reels more. Um, that's a no-brainer. If you're posting two or three reels and you're not growing, post more. We know that reels go to more non-followers. So if you want more non-followers, if the aim is to grow, you want more content to go to non-followers so that they follow you. It's pointless if you're looking at growth, creating content for your current followers only content for your current followers. You shouldn't disregard content for your current followers. But you want to bias reels. So instead of posting two or three, go to six or seven. I'm then telling them to pick four or five different genres of reel and start to create them for a few weeks, two, three, four weeks. The genres will be spoof video, um, skit, um, training tutorial, training voiceover, day in the life, talking head, rant, um, caption overlay video, um, like a journey style video of like a, a progress update style thing of what they're doing with their journey or where they've come from, um, like a, a captioned voiceover video. So I'm kind of giving different options for people and they're picking the, the four or five that suit them most. Like for example, some people won't want to do skits because it doesn't suit them. Some people won't want to do training tutorials because their audience do, doesn't need to know it or whatever, right? We're then doing that for a period of a few weeks and then we're looking at the ones that tend to go further for that audience. So I've got one client, Rich, whose videos, it were quite clear, his captions were going further, his caption overlays were going further. He had 1.2 million on one of his videos and he's regularly getting 20 to 40, 50,000 on his other videos. So if the target is purely growth, it makes sense to then bias that. So I then cut out the four or five different other types of video and just focus on the one to two best performing types of video for a period of time, only for a period of time. Still within that, so with Rich and with Tia and with Ollie, the, the three people who've gone viral in the whilst they've been away, I'm still saying, still post personal stuff, still post um, social proof, still make sure that you're on your stories and make it engaging um, and still try to drive engagement, sp create conversations with followers, um, funnel them towards a lead magnet, build connection, still do all of that and don't just get sucked into posting viral video, viral video, viral video, viral video. Still do all of that because then you know that you're not going to get too quick of a, a growth, but the people that are coming in are coming in for the right reasons and that you don't look like an influencer or somebody makes info videos or spoof videos, that you actually look like a coach. So that's what I've, I've done with those. The video needs to have a, like a specific um, structure to it, I would say. It needs to have a hook. Um, the three parts of the hook are the, the, the cover title needs to be a hook, not a statement. You see this a lot where it's just like um, weekends are killing your progress. That's not a hook, is it? That's a statement. That's okay. Okay, yeah, they are. That, that That's not a hook. It needs to have a hook. The first three seconds needs to be hooky on the video to capture attention. And then the, 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 the first line of the copy should have a hook as well. You might go, how important is it? Well, 
I would say, do you think it's more or less likely to get somebody to watch if those three <laughs> things have had time and effort put into them? I'd go more likely. So if the idea is to get more eyes on it, do the thing that makes it more likely to get more eyes. Well, it's arguably the most important bit because without that, no one's watching it. Yeah. And if you're trying to get more eyes on your stuff, the hook then is the most important bit. And, and <clears throat> one of the things I wanted to interject with there is also wh when Mike said then about like, we're going through these phases with people and we're looking at these videos and we're planning, like this requires thought and planning and effort. This isn't just a, oh, get to the end of the day and go, oh, I'm just got a video, a B-roll. I'm just going to post this through three lines. This is studied. This is looked at. Again, don't be entitled to just think you can post a real Instagram and go viral. The people that have gone viral or have grown their audience and have done really, really well from it have planned it. They have looked over their previous stuff. They've looked at the data. How many people has it reached? What videos go best? How long are they? What's the watch time? What's the best hook? Can I repost this video with a different hook? Will it go as far? Will it do as well? They're asking these questions constantly and they're experimenting to figure this stuff out. Please do not sit there thinking, oh, I posted a reel though. It didn't really go anywhere. Oh, so probably the reels don't work. No, you didn't work. That's the difference with it, right? This requires so much thought and effort that I don't think people quite understand. I think the way you just explained it then made it seem as if like, not saying the way you described it made it seem like this way, but it was almost like a, like people will sit there and go, oh, but I'm doing that. No, you're not doing it. No. You're like, this is like effort. This is thought out. This is looking at the data, the numbers. How can I write this word out? How can I make, like you just said about the hook. People think they're writing hooks. Mm. They think, oh, this is killing your fat loss. Oh. It's not a hook. It, it's, it's nothing. Mm. It's all over Instagram. Be unique. Be different. Make me want to read on. Make me want to look at the next line. Like I see people's first 10 seconds of videos. And I'm like, there's no, no way no one's watching it. Like it's just so like grabbing. Whereas I see other people. And I'm like, I can see why people are just skipping past it. Cause you don't say anything in the first three seconds. It's just you on, on the camera. Like you might be doing something funny with your hair. Or doing, and it's like, you might think it's adding some personality, but put that in later on. Put that in, it needs to grab people like really, really well. And like I said, some of them I watch them, I'm like, there's, like, there's no way people are not looking at it. Like that you can't not, it's like, oh my God, like I've got to carry on watching it. That's what you're trying to do. This isn't just a, oh, that's good enough. It's not, that is not good enough. Just going, oh yeah, that'll do. That's what people do all the time with their content, mm. isn't it? Oh, that'll do. It's good enough. It's not. Is it the best it can be? Have you given it the most amount of effort you can do? Because that's what these people are doing. They're thinking about it. They're looking over the data and they're then, dare I say, experimenting. They're actually thinking of it as a bit of an experiment to go, right, well, based on all the variables previously, these are the ones that went best. So if I do more of these and I kind of change these parts of it, what happens? Right, and I'm going to go down this route and I'm going to go down that route. I think people just think that they, they sit there and just on the spot, oh, that'll do. And they've gone viral. And oh, it's lucky. Most people that grow on Instagram, it is not luck. I can promise you that it is planned, thought out, and everyone that I've helped do the same thing, exactly the same. It's thought, it's planned out, and they actually sit down and go over it, and it becomes almost like hobby, but it almost becomes like part of their job where they spend a good amount of time looking at that data. How often do you look at it? How often do you look back over your stuff and look at the reach and the saves, the comments, the likes, the non-follower reach, the follower reach? Are you going for a growth phase, a connection phase, all the stuff we've just talked about? That's the stuff that we help people with on a, on a weekly basis. That's what people need accountability for. That's what they need guidance for. Are you doing it? Or are you just posting hoping for the best? Yeah. That's the thing. You, you'll have heard of us if, if you watch a few of our stuff and go, likes and views are not the most important thing. Because <clears throat> um, they're, they're, they're really not the most important thing. The most important thing is having an engaged audience, right? So we don't mind only getting two or 3,000 um, views on, on on our reels, right? That, that's fine. We don't need 30,000, 100,000 because the content that we produce is really clear. It's niche specific. It's personally branded. Um, it, it, it's entertaining or it's educational, you know, one of the two things. Um, and it does something for our audience it builds our brand identity it ticks every box so we don't need 30,000 300,000 people 3 million watching it that's, that's fine right so the the most important thing isn't viewing figures but if you are not growing on Instagram you're stuck at 800 followers or your your page hasn't grown you look at your engagement and you're getting 100 people engaged with it a week think about the likelihood that you're going to be able to sell anything with 100 people engaging with your account each week 100 people is friends family acquaintances ex-clients and current clients realistically so once those are removed how many actual people are following it 20 30 mm -hmm. for the for the week you're much better trying to boost that 
that reach and boost that engagement, but doing it in the right way, not doing a recipe reel because recipe reels go further and you're a male transformation coach. Do it in the right way, still personally branded, still unique to you, still right for your audience, and you're still interspersing the, the connection-based pieces in between. That's what I want you to take from this. Um, so it was a clickbaity baity title. Some, for some people, you are going to need to go for a growth phase. For other people, please do not take this as, let's just go and just grow, go and look at reach, go and look at counts engaged, and just focus on that, because you can't just focus on that. You have to focus on the whole the whole pie. The whole pie. And if you want to focus on all the other stuff first, before you start growing, join a members group, because everything in there is relevant to this, where you understand your niche, know who you're talking to, know how to create this content, build a personal brand before you then try and grow. That's what we do in the members group. Yeah. Links below in the description, so come join us. CTA. Yeah, done the CTA right at the end. Perfect. Again. Always at the end. Never at the start. I should always do it at the start, really. Do it at the start. Have All a right. good one. See ya. <clears throat>